Alright guys, so we are in the studio right now and I'm about to take you through the post-processing part. I'll whiz through this really quickly because it is a long process, but if you want to see the full video, check out our online courses. I will take you through this process in a lot more detail. So the very first thing we do is we start assembling and sorting. So right now all the images are just in one big file on your SD card. We need to move each level into their individual folders. Now the best way to do this is to use Adobe Bridge if you've got it. It loads up RAWs very quickly and basically what you're doing is you're moving the images into each of those levels. Okay, so you remember when we were out in the field and I told you to do the little clapper trick where it creates three really overexposed images. This is what it looks like now. So this will help you break off each level so you can pretty much go right this is the start and the end of each level move that into level three level four move that into all the different folders okay so after you've completed the wrangling process the next is we need to create the panoramas because they're aeb as well they've been bracketed we need to merge those images and also uh, stitch them into this panorama it sounds complicated but it's actually very quick in lightroom and i'll show you how we do that right now this particular shot we're working on is the shot that's looking into the city. There's about 40 images right here. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting those three AEB images. We're going to be merging them together. Then we're going to be stitching all the merged images into a really nice big panorama. This is CPU hungry. So if you have a slow computer, you might struggle a little bit. So just think about that. Otherwise, maybe time to upgrade. Now we're going to select all the images that we want to edit. Then we're going to go up to Photo Merge and select HDR Panorama. There's a few other options. There's HDR, there's just Panorama. Because we're, because we're editing HDR images and we're stitching it in a panorama, that's the one we click. Once you do that, it will take a little while to create a preview for you. But essentially what you need to do then is select a projection on the right. And what will happen is it will build a preview for you. Now you'll notice there's some white edges where it's kind of struggled to find images to fill the gaps. But thanks to Lightroom, there's a new feature here where it's called Fill Edges. Select that and what it will do is automatically fill those edges up. So as you can see, it looks quite clean. There's quite a bit of dark area on the bottom, um, but we'll get into the editing and the touching up in a second. After that, if you're happy with it, just hit Merge and it will start creating the panorama. So this is the panorama. As you can see, it's huge. It's 19,000, almost 20,000 pixels in length by 5,000 pixels. It's a very, very big image, but you can see the detail is really good. You can zoom right in. There's a lot of information behind there that your eyes can't see, obviously, because we've merged these three images. So that's it. Now we're going to get into the fun stuff. The editing. Really important before you start is go back to your brief. Now, I don't think I mentioned this, but what the client wanted was a bit of orange and purple in the sky. So that was his specific instructions with the edit. So we're going to go to the right. We're going to adjust the exposure a little bit, a little bit higher, bring down the highlights and bump up the shadows just a touch. Okay, so we're going to use the graduated filter. We're going to darken the sky a little bit and this will bring out the colors. Drop the exposure down just a tad, and I'm gonna increase the temperature and the tint a little bit. Now you can already see some nice orange and purples coming out there in the sky. Then we're gonna do the same, and we're gonna select the dodge or the lighten part, and we're gonna create the foreground or below the horizon to be a little bit brighter. Now we don't want it to be too bright because you'll get that really gross, oversaturated HDR look. Also, Make sure your horizons are straight. I'm gonna go down to the tone curve and I'm gonna just gonna crunch the blacks a little bit more and make the highlights pop out a little bit. So just getting that really nice S curve happening. I'm gonna try and see if I can get the sun to kind of pop through behind the church tower there. I'm gonna use the ellipse tool and create a bit of a sun flare there. I'm gonna go down to the sharpening section. Now, first you need to mask out the section by holding command. Now, everything you see in white will be sharp. And what I'm looking for is to kind of really make the outline of the buildings nice and crisp. You can see the difference there, that was looking pretty good. Keep playing with the overall temperature a little bit. So I'm going to bring up the warmth in the image, almost like a summery sunset look. Now I'm going to use the brush and slowly start isolating some parts that I want to be either darker or lighter. So you can change the diameter of the brush and then you can slowly start brushing out some of the areas, making it brighter. 
making some parts pop a little bit more than the others. And already you can see the images looking quite nice. You know how I said before, the client specifically wanted the sky to be a little bit more purpley. So I'll show you how we get that. We select the graduated filter that we used for the sky. I'm gonna drop the exposure a little bit. And also now I'm gonna change the tint on it. Now the tint, I'm gonna move the slider towards the purple end. And as you can see now, it's just starting to creep in that nice purple. And that's what he wanted, so I hope he will be happy with it. And that's basically it. I'm gonna do some final touches, make sure the overall image looks kind of quite nice. And even if you're adding a bit of purple in the sky, make sure there's a touch of purple in the shadows as well. So for the sake of this video, I've just whizzed through it, but I am gonna to touch up a little bit more of this image and just make sure it's really, really nice before we send it off to the client. But that's it.